So what we're going to do is cut through the quick of some very difficult scriptures of the Apostle Paul. Now we know that Peter wrote back in 2 Peter, the third chapter, that Paul has wrote some very difficult things to understand. And he has. And the reason they're difficult to understand is because too many people have too short of attention period and they don't like to study and they can't concentrate more than 15 minutes. Now, in order to understand some of the deep things of God, which we find in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, that we understand with the Spirit of God, we've got to rightly divide the Word of God so we can put it together and understand what's going on. Okay? Galatians, the third chapter, we'll get there in just a little bit, we'll have a few other things before that, is one of the most difficult chapters in the Bible to understand, especially because of the way that the Protestants interpret it. And this is the one that they use to say the law is a curse, and Jesus came to do away with it. Now, the first key to understand, let's come to Ephesians, the first chapter. And this is very important for us to understand. Ephesians, the first chapter. All right? Now then, they say salvation is by faith and you don't have to have works. A lie. A big, fat, lie. Now we have seen when we covered what is being under law, that means in the, you're in the world unconverted. Okay? Being under grace means you repented of your sins and you love God and keep his commandments and you're saved by grace. Ephesians, the second chapter, let's pick it up here, verse 8. Very important. <clears throat> And because they put it that way, they say that you do not have to have any works. It's by faith. That is the lie. Question. What work do the Protestants and Catholics do every week? Sunday keeping. Right? Is that not a work? Do they not get up and get dressed and go to church? Okay, now with the Wuhan virus, they've had to stay home. I hope some have come on truthofgod.org to get some good understanding. All right, here's what they quote right here. Verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is especially not of your own selves. It is the gift of God. What is the gift of God? Forgiveness of sin. Right? And the grace to have them forgiven. Correct? Yes. Not of works. See? So you don't have to have any works. But they don't define right here what the works are in this verse. And they leave it off right there. Not of works so that no one may boast. Now they rarely read verse 10. Rarely read verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So there are two kinds of works. Your works, motivated by Satan. God's works, motivated by his Holy Spirit. Good works. Okay, let's read it. Unto the good works that God ordained beforehand in order that we might walk in them. Now, what is that? Okay, 
Matthew 4, 4. What does that say? Man shall throw away every word of God because it's all by faith. Isn't that what Jesus said? Well, that's what the Protestants believe. What did Jesus say? Man, that means every human being, male and female, shall live by every word of God. Is God's word good? Yes, it is. Is God's word true? Yes, it is. If you do the works of God, are you doing your works or are you doing God's works? You're doing God's works, correct? And that's exactly what it is here. <clears throat> now, let's come to Mark, the seventh chapter, because this is also important. And while you're turning there, I'm going to do a little advertising. Judaism, a revelation of, of Moses or a religion of men. How much do you know about Judaism? How much do you know about their laws? How much do you know of what they have that they, their philosophy is this? Here's the word of God right here in the center. They have all their traditional laws that they've encircled the laws of God so you won't break the laws of God. Now that sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Huh? But can anyone produce something better than what God has produced? Okay. Now they've got books on it. I'll show you one. I've got it right here in, in this. Right here. Oh, it's over on the bookcase there. The Code of Jewish Law. Okay. Now, what was the law keeping that the scribes and Pharisees had? Their traditions. Okay. Now, what's the curse at the end of Revelation? Blessed is everyone who keeps the things written in this book. And if any cursed is anyone who adds anything to it or takes away from it. Right? Okay. Now, let's come to Mark 7. Okay. Here is the whole thing. Defined right here. Now, another thing to understand. Protestants say they're talking about clean and unclean meats and they actually have perverted the translation of the Bible to say that because of what he says here, <laughs> Jesus made all meats clean. Well, that make bat meat clean so we wouldn't have the Wuhan virus? Okay, I can't feature that. Okay. But what is it? We'll see right here. Verse 1, then the Pharisees and some of the scribes from Jerusalem came together to him, and when they saw some of his disciples eating with defiled hands, that is, unwashed hands, they found fault. Because all the laws of the Jews that they have, they have to wash their hands in a certain way, they have to eat in a certain way, they can't touch any food that's been handled by a Gentile, because that any food, even if it's clean food, is unclean. And they had thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of laws. You can't, you can't walk across a stream on the Sabbath, but if it's narrow enough, you can jump over it. If there's a fire in your house, you can't put it out, but you can put all your clothes on and carry your mattress out of the house. All kinds of laws. All right, washing of hands. You've got to wash your hands before you eat, and you wash them up to the elbow. Okay. For the Pharisees and all the Jews holding fast to the word of God. Is that what it says? No, it says to the traditions, tradition of the elders. 
Okay. Traditional laws. Does a Catholic church have tradition? Does a Protestant church have tradition? Do the Muslim have tradition? Hindus? Buddhists? Eastern Orthodox? All of them. See? Do not eat unless they wash their hands thoroughly. Even when coming from the market, they do not eat unless they first wash their hands. Don't you touch any of that food to eat it on the way home. Okay? And there are many other things that they have received to observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and brazen utensils and vessels. For this reason, the Pharisees and the scribes questioned him, saying, Why don't your disciples walk according to the tradition of men? Now, where did we read the word walk? Just a minute ago. Ephesians 10. The good works that God has ordained beforehand that we should what? Walk in them. Now, if you're going to walk in them, that means you're going to do them, right? Okay. But eat bread, according, uh, eat bread with unwashed hands. And he answered and said to them, Well, did Isaiah prophesy concerning you hypocrites? And he called them hypocrites over and over and over again. Now, think about this for just a minute. I've been reading in the Greek the Gospel of Luke. And what did God do? He chose Mary who lived where? In Nazareth. Near where? Sea of Galilee. He didn't, he didn't choose someone in Jerusalem. You would think that if the Messiah is going to be born, it would be the proper place for him to be born in, in Jerusalem, right? Okay, he chose a woman who had a special unique genetic inheritance, which was this. Her mother was of the, of the daughters of, of Aaron, and her father was a Jew of the line of David. And that genealogy can be found in Luke, the third chapter. Okay, that's Mary's genealogy. Okay, in the small town of Nazareth in the despised area of the Jerusalem Jews. Oh, you're from Galilee. That's like saying to someone who has a southern accent and comes to New York, and they say, oh, you're a southerner. <laughs> they could look back at them and say, oh, you're a New Yorker. <laughs> Okay, so, hypocrites. This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. For leaving. Doesn't that sound like what the Protestants do? Yep. Oh, except when it comes for money. Oh, they love to read Malachi 3. They love to read about the 10% in the Old Testament. But when it comes to the Sabbath, they do a high hurdle. Okay. You hold fast the traditions of men. That's the key to Galatians. Okay. Such as the washing of pots and cups, and you practice many other things like this. And he said, full well. Now, listen. Where does this put all of those who have their own traditions, who take part of the Bible, which the Jews did, add their own traditions to it, and say, this is our religion? Okay? Protestants never completed the Reformation. They kept Sunday, they kept the holidays, and they kept the Trinity. Let's go on. For leaving the commandment of God, and the commandment they leave is Sabbath and holy days. 
you hold fast the traditions of men such as the washing of pots and cups and you practice many other things. Then he said to them, full well do you reject the commandment of God so that you may observe your own tradition. Then he explained about <clears throat> taking care of your father and mother and if they give it to the temple, then they're free. No, if you steal what is God's to help your mom and dad, see, and you take that, which that was the way that they took care of their parents. They had no social security, anything like we have today. <clears throat> if you'd say, oh, well, this is supposed to go to help you, but I'm going to give it to the temple because I want a blessing. Okay. Now you can read Matthew 23 on that. Okay. Now then, let's come to 1 John, the second chapter, so we can get this cemented clearly before we come to Galatians, the third chapter. 1 John, the second chapter. Okay. This one is so fundamental. Now, Remember what we explained about the, the Jesus seminar years ago? Now, Robert Funk, who has since died from that, what they did, they would go through the Gospels and examine every one of the teachings of Jesus Christ. And they had marbles. And they, these scholars would vote on, is it true, is it authentic, or is it partially true? And if it was black, it, was, it shouldn't be there. Okay. Guess what they did to all the writings of John? The black marble was voted upon. The whole gospel. And the general epistle. This can't be of God. Why? Because it says keep the commandment. Okay. All right. First John 2. Verse 3, by this standard we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Now, what is one of the famous sayings if you walk into a Protestant church? Do you know the Lord, brother? <laughs> okay, that's what they do. Dolores can, can vouch for that because she was born in Oklahoma and around all of those Protestants and all those, them there are preachers, right? <laughs> okay. But notice, there's a condition to know him if we keep his commandments. Now notice, this is so simple. So simple. But it is the absolute truth. Okay. The one who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. Okay. Now what happens if you have a wonderful mixture of a drink and you want the pure thing to drink? Okay. Now an enemy comes in and starts adding a little arsenic to it. Just a little. Not much. You can't tell the difference, but you drink it and the arsenic stays in your body. And you drink it again the next day and so on and so on. And after a while, you get sick. And nobody can figure out why you're sick. But you keep drinking what he brings to you, and it's laced with arsenic. Then when you get so sick, he wants to get rid of you. He gives you a good dose of arsenic, and bang, you're gone. Okay? That's exactly what it is with Protestantism. They sound so good because they use Jesus' name. They read some scriptures, but they don't read this. Okay? The one who says, I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. On the other hand, the one who is keeping his word truly in this one, the love of God is being perfected, and by this means we know we are in him. Anyone who dwells in him is obligating himself also to walk even as 
he himself walked. There's that word again. We saw it twice concerning God's way and once concerning the traditions of men. Right? Okay. Now, let's come to Galatians 3. And Galatians 3 is one of the most difficult chapters in the whole Bible to understand. Especially if your mind has been subverted by the lies of Protestantism. This is the chapter, as we will see, where they say the law is a curse. And if you try and keep the law, you're putting yourself under law. That is not true. Okay? That is not true. If you come to God and you profess you love him, but you don't keep his commandments, what is the way? That's wrong. That's not true. That's a lie. Okay? Now, what was the dispute in chapter 2? Peter and Barnabas were there, and, and the mucky mucks from Jerusalem came down from James. Now see, up in Jerusalem, they still kept a lot of the traditions of the Jews. Because in Jerusalem, you know, that's the place to be. Okay. Now, they came down to Antioch where Paul was. And Peter separated from eating with the Gentiles because to eat with the Gentiles was against Judaism laws, a tradition. See? What did Peter say when he came in to meet Cornelius? God is what? God has shown me that I should call no man common or unclean. Okay? Peter knew better. God used him to bring the first Gentiles into the church. And he stayed with Cornelius quite a few days in addition to preaching and all that's there. So Peter knew better. So when he separated and Barnabas, Barnabas separated, what were they doing? They were keeping a Jewish tradition. Now, what is a Jewish tradition called? What are they called? Works of law, right? They say, if you do this, you're in good standing with God. What does God say brings you in good standing with him? You repent and yield to him. And do his will. Okay. Question. How are we forgiven our sins? Through repentance and the sacrifice and shed blood of Jesus Christ, right? Okay. Whose act is it that Jesus Christ came and died and shed his blood? The unilateral work of God the Father, correct? With Jesus Christ himself, correct? All right. Does any man, any woman, any person, anywhere have anything that can replace the sacrifice of Jesus Christ? See? No. No. Okay? Likewise, who gave the Ten Commandments? God. Where did he put them? On tables of stone, right? You had to do it twice because the children of Israel worshipped the golden calf while Moses was on the mountain. <clears throat> okay? Now think about that. This is important to understand as we 
we come through here, see. So, the only way to the Father is who? Through Jesus Christ. Any work of any law, of any religion, will not get you there. Man can never do anything that can supersede the will and power and decrees and commandments of God. No man. If you don't believe that, study deeply the book of Job. How did he do? See, even though he did the things of God, what did he do? He took all the credit to himself instead of God. See, because we keep the Sabbath, and if we say, well, I've kept the Sabbath all my life. Really? That's what God expects. <laughs> That's no merit badge for you. Okay, so Paul is explaining here. Now, this is number three in Galatians and the third chapter, so let's read it. Chapter three and verse one. O foolish Galatians. This means senseless, brainless. Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who does the bewitching? Satan and his agents, right? Okay. Into not obeying the truth. What is the truth? Word of God. What is the truth concerning forgiveness of sin? Jesus Christ, repentance, baptism, all of that, right? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ cruci crucified, okay, was set forth in a written public proclamation. Now, that's the proper translation because the root word of this word in Greek is grapfe, which means writing. Now, what does this tell you right here? They had some written instructions, didn't they? Some of the word of God from the apostles, right? Okay. What do you find in Acts 6, chapter 6, right before the second Passover, or the first Passover after the Jesus' last Passover? What did they have to have? They had to have the instructions. Who were the only ones that took the Passover? The 11 apostles, right? Nobody else knew. All the rest were eating the lamb. All of those who were following, the 120 that were following. Okay? So it says there, when they choose, chose out the deacons, you choose them out, we'll appoint them to serve the tables, that we may give ourselves to the ministry of the word and prayer. Now what is the ministry of the word? Writing it down. Okay? So, this tells us, now, you can, you can read in the commentaries in the front part of the Bible. Now, for all of those who have the Bible, you haven't read the commentaries, there's a lot of good stuff in there for you to read, which will help you an awful lot, okay? And also the appendices. But this tells you when these different books were written, okay? One of the first ones was James. The very first one was Matthew. And I did a whole comparison between Matthew and James, and that led to four sermons. It's so much identical. What shows what? Written down. James wrote this to whom? The 12 tribes scattered abroad, right? What did that tell you? They knew where they were. You're not going to write a letter and just say, I'm going to send this out there, and by the way, God, just make sure it goes to the, to the 12 tribes. Well, you send it by the Roman postal system, or you send it by messengers, whatever you do, and it gets there. Okay? So, this says they knew in writing about the death crucifixion, resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? 
Okay? So he says, verse 2, This only I desire to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit of God by works of law? Okay? Now, what if it was this? You can receive the Spirit of God if you come to Sabbath every Sabbath for 10 years. Okay? And you missed the last one. You can't make it. See? That's a work of law. See? Even keeping the commandments of God is not going to replace the sacrifice of Christ. See? Which does not mean we don't have to keep them. It just means that Christ, as the Son of God, and God manifested in the flesh, is greater, is greater than anything else. Okay? Works of law. Was Peter saved in a better state because he separated from the Gentiles? Was Barnabas? No. Okay. Now, they had the problem of physical circumcision. Uh, we can get to that a little bit later. But physical circumcision has nothing to do with converting the mind. What kind of circumcision is required in the New Testament? Circumcision of the heart, right? See? Yes. Okay. Or by the hearing of faith, you believe. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, you are now perfected in the flesh? Doing physical things? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it has been in vain? Okay. Therefore, consider this. He who is supplying the spirit to you, he who is working deeds of power among you, is he doing it by works of law or by the hearing of faith? Okay. You hear the word of God in faith, you believe you do it. Now, many things come along. We're told, pray for one another. And we've been doing that. And so far as I know, no one in, in, that we know of has died from the Wuhan virus. Okay. Now, we're thankful for that. Here in Hollister, we've had actually only one death. One came from Thailand but died, so you can't count that as a second death. So, God has blessed us in that. We're thankful and grateful for it, but does that make us something so special that we should stand up and say, oh, look what God did for us? No. God did it because he loves us and cares for us, so we thank him for it and don't get all lifted up in vanity. Okay? Hearing of faith. Now then, verse 6. It is exactly as it is written. Abraham believed God. Okay? Now, if you're 85, and God tells you your wife, who is 75, is going to have a son. Okay. It's not going to be by his works. He's well past the works, right? Wouldn't you say? And she would be right. Okay. Okay. He believed God, which also means what? What does belief require? Once you say, I believe, you're to do it, right? What if God gives you a promise and he doesn't tell you? It's going to be over 4,000 years before I finish this one, Abraham. <laughs> he didn't do that. Okay. He believed God. 
and it was reckoned to him for righteousness. Yes, he did have to prepare the sacrifice in Genesis 15 for the maledictory oath for God to walk between the parts as a confirmation. Now let's understand this about covenant. Covenant requires both parties to bring a sacrifice or a substitute sacrifice. Okay? Now then, God walked through those parts of the animals to confirm the covenant. Now what were the two major statements of the covenant? Number one, physical seed. Your own heir from you and your wife. Number two, spiritual seed. Because he took them outside at night, and that just happened to be on the Passover night, and showed him the stars in heaven and said, now look, if you can number the stars, what you can, so shall your seed be. Now what does it say that those resurrected will be like? Shine as the sun, shine as the stars, right? Yes. Okay. So there are two parts of the covenant with Abraham. All right. The first one was for the physical son, Isaac. Okay. But what did Abraham have to do before that could begin? Genesis 17. God said, come before me and be perfect. You're going to be a father of many nations. Your name is changed from Abram to Abraham. And your wife's name is going to be changed from Sarai to Sarah. And you're going to have multitudes of nations and kings shall come out of you. Okay. Now then. God already gave his part of that sacrifice, didn't he, when he walked through the, between the animals and they were all consumed, nothing but ashes left on the ground? Okay. So what does he say he has to do? He says, this is the covenant. Every male among you eight days or older will be circumcised. So what happened before Isaac was born, Abraham, Ishmael, and all the men, about 200 of them, in Abraham's encampment, were circumcised. That was Abraham's sacrifice to put alongside the sacrifice of God. See? You have to have a sacrifice. Okay? Now, when we come to the New Covenant, what was the sacrifice that Abraham gave for the spiritual children? The sacrifice of Isaac. See? But God provided a substitute. Okay? That was the sacrifice. Okay, now then, from the physical seed came Jesus. After his ministry and death and resurrection, now the spiritual seed begins. That's us. Okay, so let's go on. Okay. It was reckoned as to him for righteousness. And righteousness means put in right standing with God. Because of this, you should understand that those who are of faith are the true sons of Abraham, not the ones that separate themselves physically. See? Now, the scripture, in the scriptures, God seeing in advance that he would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, And you shall all the nations be blessed. And that was when? That was when? Before he was circumcised. To show 
that the rest of the nations do not have to offer that because they'll have a different one down the road. Okay. It is for this reason that those who are of the faith are being blessed with the believing Abraham. For as many as are relying on works of law, now here it is, this is the one verse. Okay? For as many as are relying on works of law are under a curse because it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things that have been written in the book of the law to do them. All right? Now then, let's read one of the grievous translations. And this is, if you have the Bible, you get to the Appendix Z, and you go through that whole Appendix Z. Okay? Here we go. Galatians, the third chapter. Now, let's see what they did to cause the difficulty here. Okay? Verse 10. King James. For as many as are of the works of the law, those two definite articles, the before works and the before law are not in the Greek. And having the definite article not there is important. It is works of law because it's not referring to the commandments of God. It is referring to the traditions of the Jews. Their works. See? Now, if you are doing the traditions of the Jews, what did Jesus say you're doing? You're rejecting the commandments of God. If you reject them, are you breaking them? All right. If you're doing those traditional works of the Jews and you think you're going to receive spiritual salvation, you're not going to do it. See? Why? What brings the curse? Keeping the commandments of God or not keeping them? <clears throat> How do you read Deuteronomy 28? Okay. You shall diligently keep all these words and commandments which I have given you, given you, and if you do, blessed shall you be in the city, in your store, everything that you do. But if you do not do them, what happens? Curse it. Okay. The curse comes from law-breaking and all traditions of men constitute law-breaking against God. When you are told by men that if you do this work, which is a tradition of the church or a practice that we do, you shall be saved is a lie. Okay. The curse is the breaking of the law, not the keeping of the law. Therefore, works of law have nothing to do with commandment keeping. All right? Why? Why? Let's read it. Why? What did the law of the covenant with Israel require? Okay. Cursed is everyone that continues not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. What did Jesus say? It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, 
but by every word of God, right? The curse comes because they don't keep it. See? And the Protestants are maybe at the very, very best of the Protestants halfway in the truth. Catholics don't even get zero. They're below zero. Okay? So if the Protestants are halfway in the truth, that means they're halfway out of the truth. Correct? So they have all of these good things, good sermons. You can hear good sermons on how how you need to be loyal and faithful and how you can, can fight against fear and, and all of this thing. The Protestants can do a good job with that, which is fine. But that has nothing to do with salvation. Salvation comes through Jesus Christ and loving God and keeping his commandments. All right, let's take a break.